that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Rabo Gushuko to Bolikara Baba Baba. God bless you this hour as you connect. Can we just do justice to the world by inviting our friends, sharing it upon them? Oh, Labogo Sakataba. Makotoro Gori Kanama Shikoto Bobo. Lebrogo Sikataba Baba. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is none like you, oh Lord. There is none that is compared unto you. Generations will come and go, but you remain the same. You are the unchangeable changer. We worship you, Lord. We exalt, we magnify you. We give you all glory and all adoration. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Thank you for healing, for prosperity. Thank you for advancement. Thank you for thy will. Thank you for there is none like you. The Bible said many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him from them all. Today, the Lord shall make himself mighty in you. This is a new month, a new day, a new life. We are moving very, very fast this year. The year is running as fast as it can, but I want you to know that in this month, the Lord shall make himself mighty into your life. The Lord shall take you to the place of your stadium. You will begin to rise to the pinnacle of what God has called you to do. You will not be the same again this year. Your life will be transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want you to know that things will not continue to be the way they were before, but you have to be ready for success. Preparation is what leads to greatness. If you are not prepared, how do they say, what is a miracle? When preparation meets opportunity, miracle has happened. So many things that will begin to happen in your life will become a miracle. The Lord will give you a facelift in business in job, in career, in all that you do, you will begin to become the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath by the power and the authority of the resurrected Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. I want to, I want to assure you today that by the grace of God, we are going to do justice to the world. The word for us today is resources with a vision. When you have resources that has no vision, that is where things will not work out. We tell stories of people that God has lifted and they are not standing anymore. But when a resources is empowered, that's what I'm trying to bring to that. When you, your resources is empowered for a mission, we are going to have it this year. Everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, God is going to give you resources that is on a mission, that a resources that have vision with it. That God will begin to use that to send you on an assignment that when God needs anything, you are available to provide it because he has put some things in your hand. This year, you will not just be somebody that have ideas. Your ideas will also have resources back in it. God, of, God bless you, man of God. Hallelujah. This year is your year. You have waited for it. I'm talking to you, my apostle. You will be a great blessings to the kingdom of God today, this year. I want you to understand that the Lord shall make himself mighty in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we bless you. We exalt, we magnify you. We worship you, oh Lord, Father, for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. Generations will come and go, but you remain the same. You are unchangeable in all that you do. Lord, we thank you for the capacity and the abilities that you have been increased in our life. We worship you, Lord. We give you all adoration and honor, all exaltation, all power, all grace, all all and all comes to you. Receive it right now. Receive it now. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want you to continue to pray. Just thank God. Lord, we thank you today. Every time we gather in your presence is our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. So today we are asking that you give us this day our daily bread. Let the bread, the measure of the bread for today, never elude us. Give us this day our daily bread. The daily bread consists of the daily anointing, the daily exaltation, the daily dose of the word. Give us this day the daily 
miracle. Give us this day. Whatever we need to make this day possible, give it to us. We receive it now by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the administration of heaven come. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Everything that is available in the heavenlies, we receive it unto our lives right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Robo go sakata baba ba. Magedere balika na mashikotobo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing and continue to do. Thank you for you are mightier than the mightiest. You are greater than the greatest. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. Generations will come and go, but you are God that will always remain the same. Lord, you will make a name for yourself in our lives. Make a name for yourself in our ministries, in our families. You will make a name for yourself in our job, career, business. This year, we will be not just anybody, but we shall represent the kingdom in the fullness of the capacity of God. We will not come with knowledge and without ability. Hallelujah. This year is not a year to wish that things happen but we shall make those things happen. In the places where we come and there is no way, God will use us to make a way where there is no way. By the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. Have you read the book of Psalm 1, verse 1? The Bible says, blessed is the man. The three position of a living person is, was announced there. The blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, so there was a walking position, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. The Bible says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it does he meditate day and night. So there is a law that we stay upon, and the Bible says, he shall be as the tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in a season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That is your position this year. You will make things happen where there is no door. The Lord gave us a vision this year, in Isaiah 43, verse 18, he said, Forget you the things of the past, neither consider the things of the old, for I will do a new thing. That was a promise to us. A new thing is a new triumph. God is going to give us this year as a year of triumph, a year of new abilities and capacity. This year is a year of exhibiting the glory of God, a year of manifestation who we are in God, not just talking about it. It's time to manifest. And in that manifestation, it doesn't matter where you are personally now or where you find yourself. There is a way that will come out of you because the Lord shall make a way in you. He said, I will even make a way where there is no way. And water sh shall come out of the desert. There is water in your desert by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want you to know that out of the door, this is the time we have just entered into a new month a new dimension where we will begin to begin to put those things we have waited upon the lord last month now it is time to exhibit everything that we have received many of you have seen visions where you are going and many of you are already on the pathway which is on your purpose that you have begun to do something about it the lord shall take you there in the name of jesus christ you will arrive safely you must finish strong this year thank you jesus thank you holy ghost thank you lord for who you are who you represent and who you will always be receive all exaltation and honor receive all glory receive all power let everything in heaven and on earth be ascribed unto thy holy name O lord father we adore you O lord we reference you for you are god all by yourself Alpha and Omega, ancient of days, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience God. There is none like you. There is none that will be compared unto you. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is done. I just want to thank you, those of you that have been committed to this cause waiting upon the lord praying with us faithfully let me tell you your lives will never be the same again there is always a, a reward the bible said the lord is a rewarder of them that what diligently seek him them that diligently not just seeking him 
or they seek him diligently. The Bible says he is a rewarder of those people. You shall receive the reward from God today by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 10, the Bible said, finally, brethren, be strong. So I want to encourage you that we have entered into the time of manifestation. This month is going to run very, very fast. It will run very fast, very, very, very fast. But I want you to know that you will accumulate some mileages. You will accumulate some things spiritually and physically. Hallelujah. He said, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So there are things to put on this month. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. In verse 12, and we are going to move on. Say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There are things that we wrestle. I told you yesterday, last night when we were praying, or this morning sometime, I can't remember, but that some people have not seen principalities, neither have they seen powers. There are some revelations you will not have until you begin to have some kind of ability. I told us how when um, Abraham went to the battle of Chadorama in Genesis chapter 14, and he defeated, the Bible says he divided his men, 318 of them. He divided himself among all his men. So Abraham was in 318 people. And he went and fought and brought back the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. And his, also his nephew Lot and his family. And when he brought them and he gathered the spoil, there was so much blessings. The moment he attained that height, a spiritual king visited him. The Bible says a man showed up in his house with bread and wine on his hand called the king of Salem. Abraham never knew about a king that existed before. And his name was called Mekishadek, the priest of the Most High. And he came and he blessed Abraham. And they broke bread and wine, they ate. And he said, blessed be Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. God had been in communication with Abraham directly or indirectly through dreams and trances. But this time, there was a, somebody that visited him. Many of you will begin to have divine visitation in the area of wealth. Because let me tell you something. If you don't have financial empowerment, there are many things you can never achieve, even if you have anointing. The anointing is not enough until God has empowered your anointing with finances. And I'm going to explain myself. So, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And you see how many against we have there? Against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have to be strong this month and the whole of this year because we are going somewhere. Hallelujah. Psalm 115, Psalm 115 verse 16, the Bible says, the heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to the children of men. So we are custodians of the earth. We are the custodian of this world. We are the custodian of the word of God also. But what are you doing with what has been given unto you? If the earth is yours, the Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and there that dwell upon it. But here in Psalm 115, the Bible says he has given us that earth, everything that is in it. I remember in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, after God has created man, the Bible says God blessed them. So I don't want you to look at yourself as if you are not blessed. The Bible says God told them, say be fruitful, multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. So God has already put blessings in you, but now you have to know how to begin to manifest them, use them to the glory of God. Begin to use them to bring forth the, the glory of God. And that earth that God blessed man and put man in, the Bible said it was given to man. Do you look like somebody that owned this earth? Or you are just looking at people? Let me show you something. So, because when we talk about finances, some people are thinking that we are going to raise money. No. Thank God for what God has put in us in this ministry. We, 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 we teach people principles and ordinances. And if God blesses you, you send blessings to us, we are going to take it. But we don't catch people to give because we work so hard. I, I'm not the kind of pastor that is just out there and speaking in tongues and hoping that things will change. No. I get blessed spiritually. But I also work hard because I have a lot of talent. I have a lot of gift in me. I have a lot of knowledge of things that I can do legally and make money. Zechariah chapter 1, I want to show you something. Verse 17, the Bible says, Cry yet, say, thus says the Lord of hosts, my cities, these are children of God, my cities, what? Through prosperity shall yet spread abroad 
and the Lord shall comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. My cities through prosperity. So let me tell you something. If God say it is through prosperity that you spread, let me tell you, you need to spread. When God was telling them in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, and you shall receive power. That power is an empowerment. And you shall become witness. You will begin to tell your story, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. If they don't have the resources to expand to that capacity, they will be limited to Jerusalem alone. But as they continue to go, God began to bless them and they began to expand. So God said, my cities through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. Are you ready for expansion this year? Are you ready to spread abroad? Are you ready for God to make room for you? The Bible said the gift of a man make it room. Room is a capacity enlargement. You shall enlarge. You begin to enlarge to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Don't be fooled. There is no way if you don't have capacity in this life, you don't have financial empowerment and you, 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 you get money. I'm telling you, you are going to go back and tell the story how you made money and the money was taken from you. And somebody, some people will not even fear get to that place because you have been conditioned from different people that preach to you. Say, you know, as a Christian, you just have to keep doing the right thing until you die and go to heaven. God didn't say, Come quickly, say, Occupy until I come. Haven't you seen it in the book of Luke? When he called 10 people, the Bible says, and he gave he gave his servants 10 minors. He said, Go and do business until I come. Occupy until I come. What the talent that you have received from God, what are you doing with it? There is a day of reckoning. He will come back for an account. It's not just going to ask you how many times you prayed and fasted. God, God is interested in you succeeding financially. In fact, in the book of Third John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that thou may prosper. Finance. Be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So sometimes when we talk about money, people are so shy. They, don't, they say, oh, they want to hide their face. But if there's a responsibility, your son is about to go to school. You need money. Some of you are going to pay your rent now. And you don't have a, enough resources to pay your rent. And that is when people compromise their faith. Aren't you ashamed that you have to do some things that you are not proud of just to be able to meet up with your responsibilities? And unbelievers are out there buying properties and doing great things. Lord, today you must change my status quo. I don't want to live this way again. I want you to pray that prayer. Say, Lord... The Bible says, my cities through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. Give me resources with vision. Give me capacity with vision. Give me ability with vision. That when you I receive it, there is somewhere it's going. You don't just have to have resources, but you have resources that have vision. I wish above all things that thou may prosper. Be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Lord, oh Lord, Father, I cry to you today by the power and the authority. Some of you need a miracle, quick fix. But if, if miracle is not every day. If you are just out and down, God can restore you with a miracle. But once you receive it, that should be an, a, a resources that has vision. You already know where to go. You, need what, you know what you want to expand on. You know what you want to do. Some of you, you need a quick fix. You need a job right now. God, God, God will not just say, okay, it is well with you. And bless you. He will give you a job. Allah bagasi. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, the Bible says, everybody that came, Matthew chapter 20 from verse 1 down, everyone that Jesus met, he gave them a job. There are some people that came out in the first hour, some people came in the third hour, in the sixth hour, in the ninth hour, even up to the eleventh hour. He was giving them jobs. So if you don't have anything, you need a miracle. If you have something, you need vision. You need to, you need direction where you have to channel those things. Let it come to you right now. For my cities through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to show you something. Because when I'm telling you that we must have resources with vision this year. Not in the hands of the unbelievers. Do you know that some people cannot have some level of revelation, even though they are men of God, pa pastors, prophets, and there are some things that want to happen in a city. God will not show it to you because you don't have the capacity to stop it. In the fact, there was a time there was a pandemic that like what we have now on earth. And God showed it to Pharaoh. 
Pharaoh was not a Christian, was never a child of God, but Pharaoh was the only man on earth that had the ability and the capacity to wither the storm. In Genesis 41, the Bible says, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamt and behold, he stood by the river and he began to see, I don't have to read all the, the, the dream, but many of us know about the corn, the dry corns and the, 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 the fat corns and also the lean cows and the fat cows, how the lean cows ate up the fat cows and were still lean. And Pharaoh woke up and it was very terrifying to him. He had these two dreams back to back. And they began to look what will happen. God showed him what is coming. The man was not a Christian. The revelation came from God. There was a Joseph in prison. God didn't show that revelation to Joseph. Who will hear from Joseph? He was a prisoner. They will never hear from him. And that thing could have come to pass and wiped out everybody. But God sent that information to a man that has the ability and the capacity to change things, to fix it. And it was Pharaoh, unfortunately. Don't let your Pharaoh, don't let the Pharaohs of this world continue to have big dreams. In fact, when Jesus was born, who are the people that God showed? <laughs> Poverty is a cause. Who are the people that the Lord showed that the Son of God has been born? The people that have the ability to bless him. Pastors were preaching and waiting and speaking in tongues. Members, people were just in the church, clapping and waiting for the Messiah. Messiah has been born in a manger. Nobody knew. His family threw them out. They didn't even know that this is God coming into their family. If they knew, Jesus could have been well taken care of. But what happened? The wise men from the east, they saw his star. These are not Christians. They were not anything in Judaism. They were not even part of anything that believed in God. But they were stargazers. They were astrologers. They saw his star. And they knew that that star was a different star. The star was brighter than every other star. The star was a king. And they carried a lot of gifts and they came. And they went to the house of Herod first before they finally located the boy. And they came and the Bible said they worshipped the, the boy, the baby Jesus. And they gave him gold, frankincense and man. In Matthew chapter 2. They came, Maggie. They brought resources. God have to take from the devil, take from the wicked people. That's why the Bible said the forces of the Gentiles are for the children of God. God will begin to give you the forces of the Gentiles. But you must have vision towards it. So resources that is coming to you this year and this month is coming with a vision that will advance your life, advance your family, advance the people around you, advance the kingdom of God. It's not something that you waste. That's why when we're talking about um, blessings in the kingdom of God, we're not telling you to go buy Gucci's and Louis Vuitton and all that. Yeah, those things are good, but that's not why God bless you. God did not bless you to have 10 cars packed in your garage and live in 12 bedroom house that you will never occupy. No, that is wastage of wealth. God will give you wealth, even if you have the ability to buy all the whole cars in the world, you will channel it into good causes in the name of Jesus. So Pharaoh was the man with the capacity he was the man that was right to do the job. So when he had that dream and he could not understand the dream, now the men of God that couldn't pay their bills were brought out to come and explain to him how he will settle that dream, how he will put good functionaries on it. And that was where Joseph came and was part of that dream to be able to administer what God revealed to an unbeliever. God, God forbid. Today we have men and women of stature, people that have capacity, that when such vision is coming, God will first show it to the church. The Bible said, in Psalm 110, verse 1, He said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies to be at thy foot too. And I will send the rod of thy strength. The rod is authority of thy strength out from Zion, the church. We're supposed to receive that authority. And he said in verse 3, rule thou in the mix of thy enemy. Are we in charge today? Are we in charge of the sciences and the advances and the discoveries and the bio, bio, biotech, biomedicine and all that is going on on earth today? Are we in charge? The pandemic was just an example. The church was praying and the unbelievers will tell us to shut down churches because we don't have what it takes to proffer solution. The church is supposed to be the ones developing this vaccine. We're supposed to have research centers all over the place. So that when such things happen, we will be the ones that will bring solution. 
there's another time. This is an example of what I'm talking about. All the people, the Pfizer's, the CEOs of Pfizer and the Madonna's and the, all the Johnson and Johnson people, many, many of them are not Christians. Some of them have never been to church, but they are the ones that had the capacity to develop what will wither the storm. That people can still walk around. Just even the test kit was it developed from the church. Many churches have schools. Do we build research centers? I'm talking about we knowing what to do. There, there was a pandemic. God didn't tell them to pray. God told them to store food. And through Joseph, Joseph brought the solution that they have to put storage centers in all the provinces of Egypt throughout the whole world. And every food that were being harvested in those days, they will have a system of drying them and preserving them. And they preserved food for seven years. It was a lot of food. By the next seven years, when the farmer hit, the Egyptians have cushion. Pharaoh was selling and selling and bought everything in the world. They had the resources to buy. That was the design of capitalism. It was designed by Joseph. It was revealed to Joseph by God. But why didn't God give the Joseph the, 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 the original dream? Because Joseph has no capacity. There was Jacob, his father. They have to later come back to Egypt to buy food. That was the, the, the child of God, the third generation of Abraham. That was the people that all the families of the earth shall be blessed through. But God did not show that dream to Jacob. Neither did he show it to all his sons. The dream was given to Pharaoh. I want to make something out of this. As a child of God, you want to be a solution. But we must have the ability and the capacity to position ourselves where we will bring that kind of solution. In the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 9. Verse 1. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrew, Let my people go that they might serve me. At the time God called Moses, in the whole of the Jews that were serving in Egypt, God did not call anybody. Moses had the capacity because he has lived in that palace. One, he was trained as a son of Pharaoh. He became, he became a prince of Egypt. And all that, when he left and was trained by God for 40 years in the backside of the desert by Jethro, his father-in-law, at the fullness of time, he has gotten the, the magic and the mystics of Pharaoh. And now he has discovered the, also the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Moses was the rightful man for the job. And God called him from a burning bush. Say, Moses, pull off your sandal for where you are standing is the holy ground. Exodus chapter 3. And God began to tell him, say, I'm the God of thy father Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, the God of the Jews. Now you go to Pharaoh, tell him, let my people go. And Moses said, no, 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 what? Who is this God? He wanted to, he said, show me something. I want to see something. And God said, what do you have in your hand? He said, just a staff, the dry wood. But I want you to know that God is that God that can make dead things to come alive. He said, drop it. The moment Moses dropped the wood, the wood became a living organism. It became a serpent. One, the God of the Egyptians is a copra. So that wood became a copra head. And Moses already knew what that means. He saw the God of the Egyptians. He began to run. God said, go back and pick it. That God that you are afraid of in Egypt is going to be a toy to you. Pick it by the tail. And he grabbed it. It became a wood. And God said, what is... He said, take your hand and put it inside your clothes. And he did. And brought it out. It was leprous. In those days, when you are leprous, you are put out of the camp in a colony. You are excommunicated from your family, from your wife, children, everybody. And Moses shouted. God said, put it back. He did. And it became like a hand of a child. The hand was restored. Now he has seen power and signs. Because Moses was trained in the mystics of the Egyptians. He was the rightful man for the job. There are things you cannot attain. I don't care how many times you pray and, and, and fast. Some revelations will not come because when it comes, they will despise it. I'm going to show you something. That's why this year you must make money. As God is advancing you in everything, God will give you resources, financial capacity, ability. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Look at the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. 
Verse 14. To back up what I'm telling you. The Bible said there was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and, and built great bulwark against it. In verse 15, we are reading up to 16. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. This is an abnormality. How can somebody be so wise and be poor? And by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered the same poor man. Verse 16. Now Solomon concluded. He said, then said I, Solomon was writing, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. How many of you have some great things to say, but nobody wants to listen to you? Nobody care what you say. Nobody wants to hear from you because your voice cannot be heard. Your voice are not heard. Your words are not heard because you don't have what it takes. But this time God is giving you resources with vision. That when you say, hey, listen to me, everybody will listen because you are not just telling them about what is going to happen or what is happening. You have the ability to finance it, to bring that project to reality. What you are telling them that is in your mind or what you are envisaging, you can make it happen. This year, it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be like the man that even though he had this great ability, God used him with his wisdom to deliver the small city from a great king. But the Bible said, his words are not heard. Ah, Laba, that is a that is a wrong place to start. Say, God, this year my vo my words shall be heard. My voice shall be heard. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray that prayer. Your words shall be heard. Your voice shall be heard by the power and the authority. Because the Lord shall give you resources with vision. The resources that is coming to your hand. You that's why we we, we we tell people to come to church and they will come for a while, but when they need something, and they just let's say there's a challenge, and we tell them, Don't worry, God is going to help you, God is going to take care of you. Come on, somebody cannot buy food. You tell him, Don't worry, you see, God is going to take care of you in the name of Jesus. We pray for them. We're supposed to be fishing food out and giving to them there. Some people cannot pay their rent. And we say, don't worry, it is well with you. That person is in dire need. They don't need that uh, development now. It's not time for you to say, let me train you or teach you how to fish. It is time to give them fish because where they are, they just need to survive for that day. And we see people, after a while, they run back into the war. Some of them are criminals, drug pushers, and barons. People go back into prostitution just to make ends meet. It's like God is not working. Your God shall be visible today. God will give you resources with vision. That you will not talk the talk, you shall be walking the walk. You will not be like the poor wise man. That his voice was not heard. Even though it was his wisdom that saved the whole city, nobody recognized it. He can't even say anything and anybody listen. Haven't you seen a lot of, you? many of you know people like that. Maybe you are that person. You are so smart, you have a lot of ability and capacity mentally. But because you don't have what it takes to back it up, nobody listens to you. It will all change this year. You will not be all wisdom and knowledge and revelation, but you will also be empowerment. You will be empowered financially. My cities through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. That's what the Bible said. My cities, Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. My cities, God said, this is not me. He said, thus says the Lord of hosts. My cities, not one city. My cities, these are the children of God. Through what? Prosperity shall yet spread abroad. And the Lord shall comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall prosper this year. Not just prosper. You shall prosper and you shall be prosperous with a vision. The resources that God will put in your hand is coming with vision. By the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12. The Bible says, for wisdom is a defense. And what? Money is a defense. You see, we talked about the man that had wisdom. His wisdom was great because he saved the city, but he was despised. If that man had money with the level of wisdom he had, they will celebrate him. His name will be even be mentioned in that, in that verse of the Bible. We don't even know his name because they call him a poor wise man. So the Bible said, the man that understands wisdom, when God gave Solomon wisdom, 
He was not just a wise man. He was a wealthy man. In fact, he was the richest man. Wisdom is a defense. And what? Money is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Once you have wisdom and have money, forget it. Everything will be answering to you. The Bible says money answers all things. When you have resources, finances, I'm not talking about money that bring lost. Money that when you have it, you lose your sense of belonging. You lose who you are. God will not give you that kind of money. This year, God is giving you resources with wisdom. Resources that have ability in, in them. The resources that have vision in them. That is on an errand. The, the, the money that is empowered, that is on a mission to do something right. To break grounds. To begin to bring people together. Job 36 verse 11, the Bible says, if you obey and serve the Lord this year, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Receive it now. Say, Lord, I shall obey and I will serve you. Give me the capacity and the ability to spend the, the, my, 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 my days in prosperity. That's every day you wake up, you are prosperous and your years shall be in pleasure. What is pleasure? The good things of life, you have them. Good wife, good husband, good children. And you are at peace at yourself. The Bible says you shall spend your days in prosperity. Every day you wake up, you are prosperous. Financially, you are prosperous in the kingdom. You are prosperous in your health. Because that is the three angles of prosperity. Third John verse 2 says, I wish above all things that thou may prosper, finance, be in health, even as thy soul have communion and communion with God. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, then you shall eat the good. There is a good things on this earth. We, 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 we are not just praying and say, God, I don't care about the earth. Heaven is my home. No, no, no. It is not time yet to go to heaven. God said the time for you to come is 100 years. So why are you thinking heaven now? Who is going to pay your bills for the next 70 years as you are 30 now? You are 25. And they are telling you that, you know, when you come to God, the, 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 the wealth of this world is vanity. Who says so? When Jesus died, the Almighty God. Everyone that prays in tongue and speak in tongue, they run away. They hide themselves. A man called Joseph Alibatia, a wealthy man. The Bible says one of Jesus' apostles. We never saw that man in church, but probably he buy tapes and support the ministry. People like Nicodemus never come to church. They come by night and talk to the man of God and empower him. The Bible says Joseph Alibatia went to the governor, Pontius Pilate. And say, I need the body of that man. And because of his influence and ability, the body of Jesus was released to him because they could have taken his body and seized it, probably throw it away upon it. Nobody could have known where Jesus was buried. But this man took the body of Jesus and went to his private tomb that he has built for himself. The man was still alive, but he has prepared his, his grave where he will be buried. That was where Jesus was buried. A well furnished and prepared tomb. That was why his disciples have to have access to come there. People like Mary Magdalene to come and embalm him and put oil upon him until Jesus resurrected. You need to have money this year. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. I don't want you to just be praying and praying and be seeing demons and witches and wizards every day. God will begin to show you where there is money show you abilities and businesses that you can go into. God will begin to show you in the dream the kind of jobs that you need to venture into. Open, God will open your eyes into different markets and different things that are trending in the crypto world, in investment and stocks, bond, mutual fund. You will begin to see such vision. Not every day you see somebody pursuing you or you are pursuing somebody in the dream. Oh, labaga sikata bababa. Magodo roboroko to sekete bababa. I'm telling you, if you can hold on to God, you will never be the same person again. Many of you are going to come back at the end of this year and say, what a God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil darken your understanding. Don't let religious spirit tell you, don't worry, wealth and riches doesn't matter. When somebody is sick, a family member is sick and they call you, you say, well, let us pray. After you have prayed, you're supposed to minister to that person and bring forth resources to change their life then. 
But because you don't have it, you say, don't worry, God will take care of that. The helps of the nation are for the healing of the people. There are things that God can put money in your hand and you go and say, well, these children, they are not in school. Let's pay their school fees right now. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, having the understand, their understanding darkened. A lot of Christians are so backward when it comes to every other thing because they think that, oh, I don't have to be aggressive. I don't have to pursue wealth. I don't have to have money because I don't need it. But we pay our bills. We eat. We do all that. Having their understanding, Ephesians 4, 18, darkened, being alienated from the life of God. God's life is very, very robust through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Don't let the devil eat your lunch, blind your heart and tell you that it doesn't matter. It matters. The Lord shall open you up today. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou have rejected knowledge. I will also reject thou, not you. You will open your mind this year. You will learn things. You will be open to new things, new dimensions of life, new possibilities in your job. When you see opportunities, you know. Some Christians, when opportunity come, they are so scared to take it. Because the devil will tell you, oh, that I don't know anybody in that place. In that city, how can I go there? One guy I was talking to is, is, is working in Oklahoma now. They just moved from Africa. And he was a lawyer in Nigeria. He came here and he was doing nothing, doing his um, LPN or something. And the wife was a CNA. These guys were struggling. Their two children were very young. They were always back and forth. In fact, the marriage almost broke apart. And one day I was counseling him. I was talking to him. I said, what did you study? He said, I did law. I said, why not go and do your master's degree in law? What area of law do you practice? And he told me, business law. I said, well, you can go and apply to schools and get a master's degree in business law here in this country. He said, is it possible? I said, yes, it's possible. So he said, but I have started this LPN thing. I said, you don't need that. You don't have that ability. There were two people I counseled in the same year that way. The both of them were lawyers. Both of them are doing very well now. One is in Nigeria, one is in Oklahoma. The guy went and got admitted to the University of Oklahoma. And the, the wife said, they are not going to move. Oh, they are not going to go there. It's a white and racist place. They don't know anybody there. They have family, friends, and where we shall see in Atlanta. And the, it was back and forth. I told him to go first. Go and look at the ground and see how it works. If I was some kind of greedy pastor, they were coming to our church. I would say, don't go. I want them to succeed. I knew what they were going through. The guy left. The wife was whining and complaining. And the guy went and found a place and he was in school, got a job, and he finally came and moved the wife. I saw them last year. After maybe four or five years now. When he graduated and got a job, he told me he was working for this um, airline company. The company built, built aircraft. They have a branch in Oklahoma, but their headquarters is in, New in Connecticut. It goes back and forth. They are doing very well. Through prosperity shall the kingdom be straight, spread abroad. Don't let people fool you. Some pastors will tell him, don't go, because they're counting. If, if this family leaves, I lose the father and the mother and their two sons. You know, that's a, those are four people leaving church. No, 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 no. We don't think that way. We think big and broad. Today, if I, if I have anything to do in Oklahoma, I have a son there. I can call him anytime, and I will be received, well received in the house. The Lord shall give you wisdom this year. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Don't be destroyed this year. You must succeed beyond measure. You must succeed beyond anything. Psalm 82 verse 5, the Bible said, for they know not, neither do they understand. They walk in darkness. All the foundation of the earth are out of God. Let me tell you something. You will not walk in darkness. This year, I want you to say to yourself, I'm going to walk in the light. The light shall shine in me, and darkness cannot comprehend it. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for their light is come. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon. That is where I'm supposed to be. I cannot just be walking and not knowing where I'm going. He said, They do not know, neither do they understand. They walk all the foundation of this earth are in darkness and out of course. I reject that. O Karabashi Katababa, Magedere Bali Katasikotobo. You shall walk in light. According to the word of God in John chapter 1 verse 4. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And that light shined in darkness. Every darkness will not be able to stand it. They will just disappear. Darkness cannot comprehend it. That is your position to this year. That is your expression this year. That is your confession this year. I am light. I carry light in me. Light shines in darkness. If there is no way, make a way out here. That is where God gave us. I will do a new thing now. It shall spring forth. I will even make ways in the wilderness. Isaiah 43 verse 19. But before then, he said, forget you the things of the old. Neither consider not those things anymore. Every old thing in verse 18. Forget it. Move into something new. For I will do a new thing in your life. Now, it shall spring forth. So even if you are stuck in a wilderness, God said, I will make water to spring out of a desert. And I will make a way where there is no way. You begin to see possibilities in, in, in an impossible place. And God will begin to align your mind with him. The path of the just is like a shining light. The Bible says it shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Proverbs 22 verse 7. The Bible says the rich ruleth over the poor. And the borrower is a servant to the lender. That is not your portion. The rich, it doesn't matter whether they are unbelieving rich people. As long as they are rich, they rule over the poor. God didn't create you so. God created you with strength and ability. And you shall become that man. You must succeed this year. Let me show you something. And we are going to pray. And by the time, by the grace of God, our time is almost up. Second Kings chapter 4. If you look at the story of the woman, the wife of a pastor. Every time I read this place, I cry. I have made different messages out of this. So now the certain, now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet, a pastor's wife, unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors are come to take unto him my two sons as bondmen. The children were been taken as collateral, the children of pastors. And Elisha said, what? And we know the story, say, what do you have in the house? The woman said, I don't have anything. And every time we come out that way, I don't have nothing. Sometimes, what do you have is not money. What skill do you have? What ability do you have? What capacity do you have now? What can you do now? The woman think the man was trying to say, give me money. No! Elisha said, what shall I do for thee? Tell me what had thou in the house? And she said, thy handmaid had not anything in the house saved a pot of oil. The moment she said, we just have one useless pot of oil. The man said, that is it. That's the key. I don't have anything, but I have a, I'm a graduate. That's the key. I don't have anything. I have a master's degree. That is the key. I don't have anything. I have been to the military. That is the key. You have skills. I don't have anything. I've worked as a forklift driver. I've, drive, I've driven Uber. What do you have? Then he said, go borrow vessels. You need vessels that will carry that thing out. Something that will showcase you. The vessel is what we carry, what you have. Your oil. Your oil must go through a vessel. He said, borrow vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. And when thou had come into the house, the Bible said, shut the door. Sometimes when you God begins to give you ideas, you don't have to spill it out. In fact, before you share the secret of your success, my, my, my idea is collect your portion. Shut the door. Hallelujah. Of thy house. And begin to pour out into those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. And in verse 5, the Bible says, So she went from him and shut the door of her house. And, the, and the, her sons brought the vessels. And she poured out. And verse 6, And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her sons, bring me yet a vessel. And they said unto her, there is not yet any more vessel. So if she had more vessels, she could have been pouring. Like when you need capacity, God will give you multiple of them. This where I'm speaking to you today say, is a vessel. Facebook is a vessel. We have a vessel like YouTube is a vessel. Instagram is a vessel. Where the oil in my life can be spread abroad. I can be able to showcase the oil. Some of you have some oil in you. You have some knowledges, some skills. Get some vessels. Get a store. Start a business. That is where you showcase that. That is where people can see it. And what did the man of God say to her? In verse 7. And she came and told the man of God 
and he said go sell the oil and pay thy debt and leave thou and thy children of rest that woman could have been taken their children could have been served and into slavery this is a wife of a pastor these are sons of pastors Karaba shakataba that man died of poverty the oil was in that house and the husband died probably what killed him was the day have man Today, God is going to open your eyes. That as we are praying, the Bible says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. God told Abraham in Genesis 22, verse 17, that in blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sands which is upon the earth or the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of their enemy. The Bible says, in thy seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed today we are we carry that blessing already in us the moment you come to the knowledge of christ if you look at galatians chapter 3 verse 13 the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cost of the law be made a cost and it is written because is every man that hanged upon the tree that these blessings that god said the blessings of abraham will come to the gentiles the blessings already upon your life get your hand dead the bible says, whatever your hand find it to do do it with all thy might. Might is you put your strength upon it. Whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it with all thy might. Whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it with all thy might. Do it with all thy might. Do it with all thy might. Ah, rabba, rabba. You just go and do it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do it with all thy might. That is what God will bless. Thank you, Jesus Christ. If that wise man that was in that small city, in that same Ecclesiastes chapter 9, was doing something, and the king come with the level of knowledge the man had, and the wisdom, and he has resources, it would be a bloodbath. He will not just save the city. He will overpower the other nation and take over the nation. He could have been a, a double king today. But because he didn't have capacity, he was able to negotiate their way out and save their city. And nobody recognized him. His voice was not heard. That is not your portion. The Bible says, my city is through prosperity. You shall spread this year. Shall yet spread abroad. In the name of Jesus Christ. I begin to pray. Say, Lord, I will spread abroad. In James chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible said, you, 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 you ask not. You have not because what? You ask not. You don't have because you are not asking. If you look at what Jesus said, ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. John chapter 16 verse 24. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. If you need a quick fix, you need a miracle right now. Ask God. You can get it in the next 24 hours. That is what you need. Many of you are going to be paying your bills tomorrow, next tomorrow. You need a miracle. God is going to do that. But it will not be sustainable for every month. God will just pay your bill. Find out what you have to do to be able to pay that bill by yourself. By the power and the authority. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Ask and you shall, it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and doors shall be opened unto you. Some people are just praying and praying, God send me men. No, it's time to go and knock doors. It's time to ask uh, the right questions. What are you doing? I need to get into your biz business. The kind of field where you are. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and doors shall be opened unto you. And that is when the miracle will not come. Exodus chapter 3. The Bible said in verse 21. And God said, I will give these people favor in the sight of their enemies. And in their case, yes, Egyptians. You, your enemies can be a blessing to you. When God favor you, you wear the garment of favor. But you must be ready to go and represent this kingdom. Because God will give you resources with vision. You will not just have money, but you have money that have focus. Money that know where they are going. Money that will be used to do the kingdom of God. To do the will of God. Resources with vision. That is what we are talking about. Resources that is empowered. That is loaded. That is on a mission. That is going somewhere. My cities through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. God said, I will give these people favor in the sight of the 
Egyptians in the sight of thy enemy. And they shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. Receive the ability. When you go empty, that means that there was nothing there before. But God said, when you go from today, you shall not go empty. Today, let the ability of God begin to come. You shall not go empty. As you go now, as you go into the world, as you go back to your business, as you go back to your job, you shall not go empty. By the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. When you go, you shall not go empty. Receive it. I'm telling you, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. But believe his prophet. I stand today speaking to you prophetically. Say, believe his prophet, you shall prosper. Believe the Lord your God. Second Chronicles 2020. You shall be what? Established. Many of you are already established in the spirit. You don't know. There's a lot of things establishing you. But believe his prophet. Get your hands dirty. You shall prosper. Prosperity will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, when you discover your prophet or your pastor, you discover your pasture. When you discover your pro prophet, you discover your prophet. In your pastor is your prosperity. God will establish you. But a man, a woman of God will say, go forward and you begin to succeed. I stand in the office of a prophet today. I say, succeed beyond measure. Prosper in everything that you do. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. I stand today, I decree unto your life. If you need a miracle right now, a fast one. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1. The Bible says, and then Elijah said, Hear you the word of the Lord. As I'm speaking to you today, or with my name and under my capacity, Bishop gave Ezobele. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow, about this time, you shall begin to succeed. By this time tomorrow, your life will change. Everything that you are looking for begin to look for you. But that is just going to give you a quick lift. It will not be sustainable. You must have something that you continue to do. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Thank you, Jesus Christ. By this time tomorrow, you shall begin to prosper and succeed beyond measure. By this time tomorrow, look at the children of God, the disciples of Jesus. After Jesus have died and resurrected, and these people went back fishing. In John 21, Jesus came to them in verse 5. If you look at verse 5 to 7, or verse 5 to 10 or something like that, but let's just do verse 5. The Bible says, Jesus said unto them, children, have you yet any meat? And they said unto him, no. They went back fishing. And he said unto them, verse 6, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find and they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw for it, for the multitude of fishes. They, they, they couldn't draw it. They walked all night. They did not catch one thing. The master stood by the shore and said, cast to the right. That is where you need miracle. But if they were not fishing, there would be no way to make miracle of fish. They were out there and Jesus said, cast to the net. Cast to the right. And the Bible said, therefore, the disciples whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon heard that, it was the Lord. He guilt his, he guided his fish coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. But Jesus came to them and gave them that fast miracle that they need. If you need a fast miracle today, you need to cast your net to the right. Receive it by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus. What we just said today is God is giving you resources that has vision in it. You are empowered to succeed beyond measure by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray with you. If you are here, you are not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Our mission here is not just to empower you with words, but we want you to come to the re re reality of the life of Christ, the Zoe life, the exceptional life, the life that is in abundance. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. That is the life I'm bringing to you today. 
So I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you today. I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for me. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. If you need healing today, receive it from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Let the power of God come upon you. The Bible says he gave them power. Say, heal the sick. I speak unto you. Heal it right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. I love you all with all my heart. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Above all, Jesus love you. If you need deliverance, write to us. If you need to know more about God and how to continue to succeed beyond measure. Connect with us. And we shall send you materials. Have a wonderful day.